Okay, so this is Jim and I exam mission. We're going to see how fast we can make it through here. So my couple of notes on Jim and I generally are um, you have to be very careful to let the FDAI finish aligning. Um, <clears throat> I haven't done this mission in a while, so. Hopefully sound will work. All right, well, mostly you're on your own, cockpit. Uh, I wonder if we're supposed to do, probably just pre-flight. Batteries and squibs on, fuel cells on. Then we turn on the computer power and that guy. And then while that starts up, you get the squibs on. I'll go ahead and say ready to launch. Get all our switches done. Wait for this. So self checks complete. Then we push start on the computer, and that's going to cause the FDAI to start aligning. This is what you have to wait for. It'll be almost towards this line going across here. That should be good. So when those are stationary, then we put it in a ascent mode. Okay, and we could get 72 ready to go here. I always have to go to input controls to get my keyboard mappings to work. I don't think that did it. There we go. So now my key keyboard maps are working. Okay. Performer radio check will skip. Uh, and then we'll fast forward the time here to get closer and then we'll start our ascent checklist. There's not really anything to do in the ascent checklist so much. Um, we're just going to separate these and zero out our ohms once we're in orbit. Here goes the launch. Insertion. We'll go ahead and pre-run that and get ready to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not getting any engine sound through. I, I don't know why that channel has dropped out. It's 
to our first stage here. Should be pitching over. And one thing you could do on your map, you can see your orbit here. You can also turn on both attitude data and manual ascent data here, and then those show up here. So it's not part of the real craft or anything. It's just an easy way to keep an eye on what's going on. So we want to match this target orbit eventually, especially if you're doing a rendezvous, you want to watch your inclination. Um, I do, the, the inclination is going the wrong direction right now, but I, I do think it adjusts later. So we'll see if that's okay. This is where you want to watch and make sure your apoapsis and periapsis altitudes are, uh, you know, stay out of the atmosphere. Periapsis would always be the lower one. But we can watch them up here too. Uh, I'm not good at reading the FDA eyeball, so I find these helpful, uh, especially when you're learning. Stage one. stage is done. We'll get ready to do these. You should be coming up here pretty soon. So one thing is these are in nautical miles and these are in kilometers, so something to watch out for. There we go. Uh, 
separate, jettison the fairings, and then flip your ohms on. Probably don't really need to do this, there's not much difference, but we will zero them out. All right. That would be to check the lights. <laughs> Shut off. Secondary oxygen. Lights. Let's see. Uh, I like to leave these on so I can monitor them. Batteries off. on that. So this is the light you want to monitor. When this light goes off, it's been 10 minutes. You can also just watch for 10 minutes. So we'll look for about 17 minutes in here. You can skip this, but it posts 30 minutes. If you do the radio check that says check the radiator temperatures, it'll tell you when you can turn on the evaporator to flow. All right. So we want to go to about 17 minutes after here when this light goes off. So I'm going to Time skip. Light off. So now the catch up program is loaded. Uh, so plan a circularization burn once you reach Apogee. So what that means is request circularization at Apogee. So it's going to want us to burn at 28 minutes after. That's pretty fast. So you can go do all the readouts, like 01 readout, and you can see it's 28 minutes, right? So we've got like 10 minutes to go. Um, I'm just going to trust it, and I'm going to go ahead and say start. So. You know, once you've verified everything, you do start. And then what you want to do is after you've done your start, you can do 84 readout. And that'll give you your time in minutes and seconds. So that's about 10 minutes to the burn. So that's going to be at 28, about 28.30, right? And it's also got it up here in the objective. So I'm not, you know, you can go set a timer here and use that. I'm just going to use this since it's up here in the objective. Now what we are going to want to do is get into a proper burn attitude as we get closer here. So I'm going to get about two, three minutes out here. And there's an extra 30 second buffer here. So, oops, that's a little close. So one thing we can do, we can go into sharpen forward and put it in platform. And you also need to turn on your ohms. And then that will automatically point to spacecraft prograde. And now what's going to happen here is this green light is going to come on when it's time to do execute the burn, right? Okay, so we're at 30 seconds. So now what I do usually is I put it in direct and then just kind of roll a line a little bit here. Um, and then go back into platform. Well, I didn't do a very good job. But lights on, so let's go ahead and do our burn. You don't have to be perfectly level or anything. So zero out our IVIs up. Okay. Now we can also check here because what we wanted to do is circularize, so we can see how circular we are, right? 
we're still a kilometer off. So since we're at Apogee, we would adjust, burn pro and retrograde to adjust our perigee a little bit. So let's push our perigee up just a little bit more. So now they're closer, right? So now we're more circular than we were, even by zeroing out the IVIs. Once you've executed a burn, it's a good idea to remember to hit reset. And it's in the checklist that way too. Should now be in the initial planned orbit. Gonna time scale a little bit. Set it to blunt in forward platform. That should flip us around. Retrograde is in one hour, 29 minutes. Start preparing your entry with the pre retro entry checklist. Let's just make sure we get enough proper attitude here. Okay. And then again, if you wanted to, you could try to, we could do rate command too, um, to make finer adjustments. so the computer holds us for us. Now for the computer to work, your ohms need to be on. So if you're going to turn your ohms off, uh, you're going to drift off of this attitude. And let's go ahead and leave it in direct for now. Uh, we can turn our ohms off so we don't accidentally bump them. And let's time skip. So it says we've got an hour. So let's time skip a ways here. Uh, let's do about 15 minutes. And then we'll start our checklist. Here, again, we can test the lights. Make sure those are all good. Although in re-entry, unless you have failures on, they should be. Uh, left panel, arm, go. Uh, I'm actually going to leave this in direct for a minute because I'm going to time scale a little bit here. Let's see. And then again, we've got a counter here, but generally you'd set a timer. Uh, looks like we can also read out core 19 for time. I guess is this is seconds, I don't remember for sure. Okay, we're gonna to wanna to put this to re-entry. Um, let's time scale a little bit more. Let's get like three minutes. Okay. And 
then we'll put the computer in re-entry. Nope, platform, and I can't see this very well. Re-entry, let's get our ohms on. Uh, oh, I went too far, I went too far. You need, you need to do this, <laughs> whoops. So now we're gonna have to wait 10 minutes for that to load. Uh, whoops. We may be on our own, but yeah, don't do not do that. Uh, give yourself time for this 10-minute this program to load. Let's do these real quick. Definitely want those on because we're about to lose our fuel cells. We're going to switch to RCS. Uh, we want to monitor RCS. Uh, that's fine. Are we in blunt in forward? I believe we are. So, I want that on for now. So now we need to do Um, that's sep ohm lines. Can't remember if we did it. Let's just go ahead and push them. I think we're late, so... Oh wait, maybe we're still two minutes. So, I don't think the program will be finished loading just yet, but it'll be on before we re-enter. Okay, they're burning now. So, if not, we could manual fire. When they are done, we disarm and arm retro jettison. I think we're done, so arm retro jettison. Jettison. Uh, also, we we should check our if your perigee isn't into the atmosphere, well into the atmosphere, then you're going to have a problem. So. 
So post retro jettison. Still not loaded yet. So it's time scaled just a little bit there. It's on now, so now we can start it. So I think if this were running, some of these steps would do better, but I think we're okay here. Start entry checklist. Entry. This just says hold your attitude. Enter the number run list. Looks like they're expecting you to enter at about 19 minutes after the retro fire time. I would think that really depends on your apogee, but that may be for these kind of nominal apogees. So. Well, let's see. So it wants us to be at a 170 degree roll, right? With the horizon at the top of window as far as pitch goes. I think I rolled the wrong way, but I'm just gonna keep going. Also, if you want, you can just flip this over into direct and then roll. That way, you don't have to keep pressing the roll. And at top of windows, so I guess we want to pitch that way a little bit. So that's just about zero pitch, I guess. I guess we go into landing. So. Just tweaking my roll to closer to 170.
It's a little dangerous, but I time scaled a bit there. And of course it's nighttime, so we get a nice pretty view of blackness. Need some more time scaling. One of the things I did is I separated out my objective input control also. So I have missing objectives on O and I took it off of whatever that other one is. Uh, communication. I think it I think it has C on both of these or something before. I split them out. That way O controls objective and it doesn't come and go with your chat. Okay, here we go. So at this point, you don't really have pitch or yaw authority very much. You can tweak your yaw a little bit, but uh, you can't control roll. You can even go into direct so that you don't have to hold it down again. Like if you want to roll, you can roll. But I think a nominal Gemini entry is just heads down. I 
I don't seem to be getting any G indication at all, so I have no idea what my G forces are. <laughs> The next step is 40k lights, and then we pop our drogue shoots, and finally go into landing attitude. Watch our speed drop. Getting some G indications now. Maybe it is working. Two G now. So I think if we roll over heads up, it'll increase our G's faster. so you don't get too high, but...
So 4K should be here. We just went into the sandbox. Okay, we could pop our drogue now. I'm going to wait a little bit. Just because uh, i got to wrap this up sooner. So... Normally, you want to pop the drogue about here. I'm pushing it. It's 20,000. So we could toggle toggle the D ring if we needed to. I don't want it on, so I'll just put it off. Uh, close these. So 10.62 is coming up. So and I'm going to hold off on the parachute. Again, you'd never do that <laughs> ever a lot. Okay, deploy parachute, and then we want to get into landing attitude once the parachute's fully deployed and stable. And that should point us down. Oh, it's very dark. Huh? There we go. Yeah, it points you flat like that. And then that would be at the end. Uh, no, I don't care about any of this stuff. Picking up some lag. Okay, here we go. Splash down and jump. Um, 